In this video, we're going to talk about a different family of graphical models called undirected graphical models. So we'll start by defining what, what I mean by an undirected graphical model, and I'll give you a, the more formal term for the, the types that we're going to look at, which is something called a Markov random field. And we will discuss then what the independence assum assumptions are that are encoded in Markov random fields. Then finally, we'll talk about the relationship between Markov random fields and Bayesian networks that we've seen previously. In fact, we'll ask, about, ask ourselves whether Bayesian networks are just instances of MRFs. So as a quick review, this is uh, the slide I showed you a couple of videos ago about Bayesian networks. And in a Bayesian network, you have uh, nodes representing variables and edges representing um, conditional probability tables between variables. Um, and the rule was that you have a conditional probability table for every single node that that is conditioned on its parents. So uh, one thing to note here is that the the uh, edges in the Bayesian network graph are directed. Right there's there's an arrow. There's a notion of a parent and a child. But uh, one thing that uh, comes up when you when you have this construction is that these networks have to be acyclic. So uh, this is an example of a cyclic Bayes net, and it's invalid, or it doesn't really make sense. There, there's you know, some way that it can make sense, but it, it doesn't mean anything particularly useful. So the joint probability, according to the, uh, the rule of interpreting a Bayes net here, is that it's the probability of B given A, the probability of C given B, and the probability of A given C. Right? It's the product, or it factorizes the joint probability into this, this form. And if you do some combinations of, you know, the conditional probabilities, you end up with a joint probability of B and C given A times A given C, and then you end up finally with the joint probability of A, B, and C given C, which doesn't make too much sense. But then you can do the same con uh, the same uh, transformation uh, to get this again same expression with with a b or c in the conditional which only makes sense in quotes uh, if p of a p of b and p of c are one um, and that's that that's not useful right that would imply that we can only write down a probability that's that's always one um, so a lot of weird stuff happens if we have cycles in our Bayes nets so all meaningful Bayes nets are directed acyclic graphs so if we want to think about the relationships between different uh, variables that may exist in cycles, then we have to think about undirected graphical models. And, and it has to take on a different form, because we saw just from the previous slide that if this were a cycle and a Bayes net, then it doesn't make sense. So the, in an undirected graphical model, we say that the edges represent potential functions between uh, variables. So they're just some function, in some factor in the factorized probability distribution between variables. And in general, the, the formula is that if you give a graph as an undirected graphical model, where the nodes again represent the variables, but the edges represent something else, the way we interpret that is that it means the probability distribution, the joint probability distribution of the variables in the graph, factorize into individual clique potential functions, right? So a potential function corresponding to each clique of variables, where we mean clique in the graph theory sense, uh, as defined here in, from the Wikipedia article on cliques, uh, which is, or which says that uh, a clique is a, a subset of the graph where every two distinct vertices in the clique are adjacent. So going back to the uh, picture, you know, the cliques in this graph, they're, they're actually uh, just the particular edge pairs. So CE, AB, uh, BC, BD, and DE are the cliques. Now this could be slightly different, right? If we, could, if we change the structure of the graph, we would end up with something different. So if we added an edge between D and C, we would end up with, or, or these cliques would no longer be uh, the maximal cliques, and we'd actually have uh, this triangle here would be one clique, B, B, C, D would be a clique, and then uh, C, D, E would be another clique. So you could also write this out as, as this, as a, 
the, a potential function between A and B, a potential function between B, C, and D, and a potential function between C, D, and E. And one very general class of these undirected graphical models is, the, is one, um, a class of models called Markov random fields. So in a Markov random field, uh, we have certain independence properties that obey what are known as Markov properties. So the most general form of this is that in the graphical model, in the graph representing the probability distribution, any two subsets of variables, S and T, are conditionally independent giving, given a separating subset. You can think of this as a, as a wall of variables between S and T, so that there's no way to get between S and T uh, without going through that wall. So, or more formally, well, slightly more formally, uh, all paths between S and T must travel through the separating subset. So an example of this would be, you know, if we, if our, if we consider uh, the two subsets S and T, where S is just the node A and T is the node C, then we can think about all the paths that go between A and C. So the paths between A and C, well, there's A, B, C, which looks like that, and then there's uh, another one, which is A, B, E, C, uh, wait, A, B, D, E, C, um, which looks like this. And if you want to find a separating subset that, that blocks both of these paths, uh, there's a couple options, or three options actually. Uh, there's uh, B and E would block both of these paths. B and D would also block both of these paths. And also B, D, and E altogether would also block the paths. So these are the separating subsets. So if, you're, if, you're, if you observe these variable values, then that makes S and T independent, conditionally, conditionally independent. So this basic property um, is, is the most general form, but there's other rules of thumb that, that, that can be derived from this general, general uh, Markov property, which is uh, one is that any two non-adjacent variables are conditionally independent given all other variables. Right? So you can see that you know, once, you're, once you see all the other variables, any non-adjacent variables, um, you know, that the rest of the variables must act as a, su a separating subset for those two non-adjacent variables. Uh, a second corollary is that any variable is conditionally independent of all the other variables given its neighbors. And this should be reminiscent of something we saw with the base nets. And in fact, it, it, it is another form of a Markov blanket, right? The, the Markov blanket in a Markov random field is essentially much simpler to think about than in a base net, right? In a base net, we had the, pro, uh, the, the, the strange fact that, that the parents of your children are also part of your Markov blanket. But now in a Markov random field, the Markov blanket is just characterized by anything that you're connected to. So one important thing to think about is what the relationship is between Bayesian networks and MRFs, or Markov random fields. And we can look at a few structures and think about how they relate. So if we just have two variables connected through an edge in a Bayes net, we have something, uh, a probability distribution that factorizes into the probability of A and then the probability of B given A. And in a Markov random field, this, this doesn't factorize at all. It's actually just a single potential function. So in this case, it's actually, uh, everything is nice because this table can capture anything, right? We can, we can represent any function of A and B with this uh, phi function. So converting a single edge to a pairwise clique potential is easy. But now if we consider a slightly more complicated scenario where we have a chain of uh, variables linked through directed edges, the Bayesian network probability is, uh, the joint probability of these three variables is probability of A times the probability of B given A times the probability of C given B. And the Markov random field factorization looks like this, right? We have two potential functions for the edge cliques, one for each, right? One for AB and one for BC. And you can think about it for a minute and you can see what, whether or not we can fit these, you know, the upstairs equation into the downstairs equation by setting fee, the fees to some uh, appropriate values. 
And the answer, in the you know, if you think about it, you'll, you'll realize that you can. And one way to do it, there's, there's actually many ways to do it. One way to do it is just to set the, the potential function between A and B to the joint probability of A and B. And then the potential function between B and C to the conditional probability between C and B. And it's important to note here that the parameterization is not unique here. But the bottom line is that chains are easy too. We can, we can take a chain structured Bayesian network and just plug it right into a Markov random field formulation. Okay, so let's look at some other structures. Now, this is not a, ch a chain. This is a, a, a Bayesian network where A is the parent and it points down to B and C. So the probability distribution here, once again, uh, we can just read off the edges. Uh, it's the probability of A, and then the joint, uh, then the conditional probability of B given A and C given A. And the, the Markov random field factorization of a, of a similarly structured graph would look like this, right? Where we have a potential function for the A B edge and a potential function for the A C edge. And you can think about it again. Let's think about it. So can we, can we do this? Can we write down a definition for phi AB and phi AC that mimic the probability distribution above? And we can. One way we can do it is to write that uh, phi AB is going to be equal to the joint probability of A and B, so P, P, A, uh, P of A and P of B given A. And then AC, we can set it to, again, the, the conditional probability, this time of C given A. Right? It's a little different from the chain, but it's, but it's, it's similar in form. And one interesting thing here, th in this case, it's a little bit easier to see that there's, this is clearly not a unique, this is not a unique solution. Because we could have easily put the P of A in the uh, AC term. Right? right now, we have it in the AB term. So the AB potential function has the has p of a times p of b given a, but we could have put that downstairs and it would have been the same equation. So there's a minor typo here. Just ignore the comma in the in the Markov random field uh, equation here. So, the, but the bottom line is that shared parents is also an easy case. Right? We can always just we can essentially just just encode directly encode the potential functions or the the uh, the Bayesian net um, edge functions as potential functions in a Markov random field. Okay, so I showed you a bunch of easy cases, but now this case may or may not be so easy. Uh, so this is different from the previous slide because instead of having one parent and two children, we have two parents and one child. Right? A and B are the parents of C in this picture. So there's a shared child between the variable A and B. So the, the, the Bayes net probability here is the P of A times P of B times P of C given A and B, right? given both of the parents, both of the, of the incoming variables. And the Markov random field factorization ends up looking very similar to what we had before. It's just the, the, the a potential function between A and C and a potential function between B and C. Um, and we can think about this to, to, again, ask ourselves, can we write down some phi functions that mimic the, the probability above? But we can also think about some other more general properties here. So one of the things that we, we, we talked about in the, um, in the class discussion and in the videos was the idea that when we have this situation where we have a shared child, that the the variables are actually become dependent on each other when the when the child variable is observed. Right? So A and B are dependent given C. Right? This is the famous explaining away effect of probability. So if we run that so we can run this exercise upstairs where we say, okay, what happens if we observe C? And we know from the from what we studied about Bayesian networks that if we observe C, A and B are are dependent on each other. But now, if we look at the Markov random field, the undirected graphical model on the bottom, if we observe C, then A and B are separated. They're, like C is the, sub, the separating subset between A and B, which means that A and B are independent given C. So these contradict each other. Right? These, these two 
statements about the probability distribution exactly disagree with each other. So this can't be correct, or there can't be a way to write down a phi function or phi functions here, the two phi functions, uh, that mimic the, the probability distribution above. So here's how we do it. The, the, the way we have to do th this kind of thing is we have to what, uh, do something called moralizing the parents. And it all comes from the family tree analogy, and it's basically saying that if you have uh, two shared children, you have to connect them to make it a more moral connection. It's, a, it's a kind of an outdated analogy, but, but it's, um, it's how people think about this in the field of machine learning. So, right, the idea is if A and B share C as a child, then A and B have to be connected in the Markov random field, which means we get a new potential function, essentially, uh, or it could equivalently mean that we have to then write down a, a clique function for the ABC clique. And that fixes the independence problem, right? Now, now A and B are dependent given C, but there is also something lost here. So the, that's basically the whole story for converting a Bayes net into a Markov random field. And, and the, the main twist that makes it slightly more uh, challenging than, than just directly reading off the edge uh, potentials from the Bayes net is that you have to moralize all the co-parents, all the, the, the nodes that share a common and uh, a child variable. And but uh, one of the things that you lose when you do that is you lose the marginal independence of the parents. Right? Remember, if we go back to the the, um, the Bayes net, we can see that the uh, A and B, if we don't observe C, are they're independent of each other. But in the Markov random field, A and B are always dependent on each other, no matter what. So we lose some something. We lose some information by by this, by this conversion, and that gives us a hint that the relationship between the class of all Bayes nets and the class of all Markov random fields, or equivalently, the class of directed graphical models and the, and the class of undirected graphical models, um, are, are different but overlapping classes, right? One doesn't subsume the other. And, and it, that, that's a common misconception, which is that a lot of times it's easy to think about, you know, since we can convert a Bayes net to an, MR, an MRF, uh, we think that, oh, an MR, MRFs encompass all Bayes nets, but that's not true. We, we lose something when we make that conversion. So to summarize, uh, I showed you, so this was this video, I guess, was a brief introduction to undirected graphical models, specifically Markov random fields. Uh, I talked about the independence consequences of the Markov random field factorization scheme. And uh, we talked about whether Bayesian networks are MRFs, and the answer is no. Um, MRFs are also not Bayesian networks. It doesn't, it doesn't work either way. Um, but you can convert to reasonably equivalent formulations. All right, so so far I've only shown you you know the definitions here, and in the next video we'll talk about inference via uh, an algorithm called belief propagation.